Hello everyone and welcome. The geisha variety is often well known in the specialty coffee community. People associate geisha with light and fruity notes, often reminding them of tea. But they also associate geisha with exceptional quality and high pricing. So I thought it would be a fun idea to go a little deeper into the history of geisha to understand what it is and why it's so expensive and sought after. Let's begin with a look at the family tree of coffee. And many of you may have heard of the species of Arabica and Canephora, or more commonly known as Robusta. The vast majority of coffee consumed in the world is from these two species, and from them has come hundreds if not thousands of distinct varieties. If we go ahead and find geisha on this map, we will see that it is part of the Ethiopian Accessions branch, or sometimes called heirloom varieties. These coffees have all been found growing in the wilds of Ethiopia, and they all have distinct genetic variations while still remaining connected to the Arabica species. It was in the 1930s that geisha was first brought to be studied and researched at the Layamungu Research Station in Tanzania. Then it was brought to Central America to be studied further in 1953 by Katie. Then in the 1960s, Katie distributed the seeds throughout Panama, and it was documented as having a high resistance to leaf rust, a common disease that farmers tried to avoid at all costs. However, even with this added benefit, the branches were brittle, and the plant did not produce as much of the coffee cherry as other varieties that were available, so it wasn't often favored by the farmers at that time. For a while, the geisha variety grew quietly at farms across Central America without much real attention being paid to it. And then, something big happened. This is where the Peterson family jumps in. The father, named Rudolf Peterson, a Swedish-born Californian banker, had intentions to retire at a beautiful farm in Panama. Rudolf bought the now-famous Hacienda La Esmeralda in the 1960s, and he visited as often as he could. As time went on, Rudolf had less and less time to visit the farm as he became quite busy with work. In the 1970s, his son, Price, decided to take a more direct role in the farm's operations, and he often used his scientific background to his advantage. In the 1980s, more coffee plants were planted on the family farm, and the family took on a more serious role in coffee production. Although dairy farming was, and still is, a very prominent part of the family's overall business. Then, in 1996, the family made a decision that would change their life, where they came together and decided to buy a nearby farm called Esmeralda Jaramillo. It was on this farm that they discovered a crop of trees all from the geisha variety. After several years of growing coffee trees and often mixing batches of cherries across the farm, Price's son David came up with the idea of more rigorously tasting specific lots of their coffee from different areas of the farm. The goal was to try and uncover unique varieties and flavors that stood out. And they found that the geisha variety from their recent acquisition was particularly stunning all on its own. And in 2004, they entered some of this coffee into the Best of Panama competition. One professional cupper described this coffee as having a intense berry fragrance in the dry grounds, and that the aroma reinforced that impression with notes of strawberry and citrus blossom background. He says, on the first tasting, I was stunned by the crisp, sweet acidity and complex fruit flavors. The quality of this coffee was enough to shock the specialty coffee world, and they went on to sell this lot at auction for a world record high of $20 a pound. For the years following, the Peterson family has entered their coffees into the competition and always left with honors. They also broke their own records at auction several years in a row, with some of their coffees going as high as $50 a pound. Ever since the Peterson family introduced their geisha crop to the world, other farmers have followed suit and attempted to plant geisha on their farms as well. To try and improve on quality, and also to make more of a living in an industry that often barely pays for the cost of growing the beans. One really interesting note though is that not all geishas are the same. First of all, they need to be well maintained at high altitudes in order to bring out their best flavor. Not only that, but some plants that are being called geisha are not technically the same as those found on the Peterson farm. Back in 1953, when the variety was being studied before distribution to Panama, it was logged with a specific number. 
of T2722. With genetic analysis, researchers can know which geisha plants descended directly from this number. And they've always found a very high cup quality in those that do. Other plants have been called geisha, especially those that were found close to the original site of T2722 but they would also have their own distinct numbers and genetics. They're not necessarily inferior. In fact, these other plants could be just as good quality. But it's due to the original T2722 variant that Panama Geisha in particular has left such an impression on the specialty coffee community. So to sum things up, the Geisha variety is mostly expensive due to its very high cup quality. The roasters pay more for it, and so do you as the customer. But now you can see that there is also a bit of an excitement around it, almost a cult following. People will hear the name and have immediate assumptions about how incredible the coffee is going to be. Any good local roaster, though, will hopefully buy the beans because they taste good and they want to share that coffee experience with you, and not just to cash in on the prestige that Geisha holds. One last note here is on the naming of Geisha, as I'm sure someone will ask, whether there should be an I in it or not. It does seem that both forms of the spelling are acceptable. Geisha with an I was used mostly by researchers and in official documentation. But the original location where the variety was found in Ethiopia was a mountain called Geisha, and that was spelled without an I. So many people have decided to reclaim that spelling due to its origin. In the end, I hope this was helpful to you in some way, and I thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like the video and subscribe. Also, make sure to comment below and tell me about a time that you had Geisha and what you thought of it. I am also on the Buy Me A Coffee platform, which is a very suiting company to partner with. And if you want to consider supporting me further, you can do so for as little as $1. The link is in the description and any amount is appreciated. I will see you all again in the next video. Have a great day.